Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, we're taking a slight tangent on functions to cover a topic that's going to be important over the next few days when I start covering LODs. That concept is called granularity. Now, granularity is really, really important in a data set because it decides pretty much how we handle our data. And so it's really vital that this is a concept you understand and you really investigate whatever data set you're working with. Today, I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's get stuck in. Okay, so we're here inside of Tableau. I'm actually gonna open the second Superstore sales here. This is the American version. Let me just go ahead and click on that and you'll see that it takes us straight into Tableau. Now, one of the things here is we need to basically start investigating what we mean by level of detail. So I'm gonna sort of challenge your perspective. And by the way, if you've been using Tableau for a long while, this might be super basic for you, but I still think it's a worthwhile refresher just to make sure that you're in tune with everything that we're gonna be talking about over the next few days when we look at LODs. Now, I'm just gonna drag in a few rows of data in here. To do that, I'm just gonna drag order ID, put it onto rows, and then I'm going to drag sales, put it onto where it says ABC, and I'm gonna leave it at that. Essentially, what we can definitely agree on here is that this table is showing us the total sales for each order. There's no sort of contention there. But if I was to ask you this question, what level of granularity does the Superstore's data set actually work on? There's actually a slightly complicated answer. You see, ever since 2020.2, that answer has become more complex because of something called the data model. And so what we have to do is ask that question of each model in our data set. Essentially, each logical layer will have a different level of granularity in our data set. Let's investigate that a little bit further. So here I've dragged in order ID. And what I'm gonna do is you'll see this field here that says count now. The interesting thing is this says count of orders, orders count, but it's actually slightly misleading because this name orders is actually derived from the name of the table. So it doesn't necessarily count the number of orders. It's just counting the number of rows inside of the orders table. So that's a really important thing to be aware of. So if I was to drag orders count into this table, you'd see that I'm actually getting multiple rows of data in each order. And essentially what's happening here is that when you make an order, you don't just order one thing all the time. You could actually order multiple things. And so that's what we're seeing here in the data. Just to keep this simple and to keep this table easy to work with, I'm gonna go ahead and select a few of these. You can select whichever ones you want. You just need to make sure you select some with uh, one rows, two rows, and four rows. So I'm gonna select this one. I'm gonna hold command on a Mac, control on a Windows machine, and just select a few of these just to make sure we've got a variety of orders in our data set. And once I've selected those, I'm gonna select keep only and just bring in a nice table, okay? Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna enable the summary window. Essentially, if I go here to worksheet and then just show the summary window, this is a nice little table that then appears here on the right-hand side. And what I wanna do is drag that over to the left uh, over here, just above filters. Now, I gotta admit, I didn't know you could drag the summary window where you wanted until last week. And I've been using Tableau for a long while. I don't know why I didn't even try that myself, but you can drag it to this particular location. This is a good location for me because I don't really use the pages shelf. So having it right there actually makes that of that space useful. And I've still got a lot of vertical space to work with. Now, this summary window is really cool because it actually reacts to what you're doing inside of Tableau. Let's say I want to know the total of these two uh, cells. I can just click on command and it will do something for me. It will tell me the sum here, but it also do the average, the min, the max, and the median between those two values. So it's a really nice way of having a calculator right in the view without having to go and get your calculator and do some maths. And it works with the values you see. It's not working on the underlying data, which makes it a really, really practical tool when working with your data set, okay? So now the next thing to do is to understand what's actually going on here. So this particular data set here has four. So if I just click on this four and I go to this little icon here at the very end, uh, you'll see that it has a table icon. If I click on that, it actually loads a summary view for me. And in there, it shows the summary of what I'm seeing here in the view. If I just drag this down, you'll see that essentially this set of summary information corresponds to what we have here in our table. So everything is really, really nice and simple to, to understand. However, if we go down to the detail here in the second tab, you'll see that we actually get more information. And looking at this data, you can see that there's actually four products in this single order. So they all share the same order ID. In this column here, you can see they all have the same order ID, which means they all came as part of the same order. 
but the person who was ordering this ordered things from different categories. Um, they ordered it um, from the same uh, city in place. I assume that Houston, United States and customer are related to the customer. Uh, the manufacturer came from lots of different places. Um, the postal code, I guess this is the customer's postal code. Um, but essentially, we're not always sure. So these are the kind of questions you'd really need to ask when you look at the granularity of data. Is the information operating at the same level or is it actually inherited from a higher or maybe even lower level? Okay. But you can see here that the detail of this data set is actually at the product level. So our entire Superstore data set is actually based at the granularity of the product in every order, not the order. Even though the table is called orders, it's actually operating at the product level of detail. Okay, what does this mean? Well, if I close this window and I just do a few things here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag sales into this view again. And this time around, I'm going to bring in the average. So to do that, I'm just going to put it here on the right hand side. Uh, that puts it onto the detail pane and then I'm just going to go to the measure, select average, then drag it in here so we get a third item over here on the right hand side. And now you can see there's an average being calculated. And now that we have that average, I'm actually going to go here to the analysis totals and show the column grand totals. OK, and so we get a, a range of numbers. We get the sales, the total sales. This, I believe, is the correct figure. And um, we also get the count of orders. There's 15. And this is essentially telling us there's 15 uh, products in all our orders. And um, in our orders, we've got eight orders here. Uh, and so what I can do just to make sure this isn't so confusing is I can actually bring in a count distinct. So let's go ahead and bring this on to detail and let's click on this little drop down, go to measure, select count distinct. Now that that's the calculation I want, I'm now going to drag it here onto the measure values pane. And now we can see what's going on. So we've got eight rows here in the table because the grand total takes up a row, but we've actually got seven orders. OK, so now you can start to see what we mean by granularity. There's different things going on at different levels. The only thing really going on at the same level of detail as our orders is actually the distinct count of orders in this particular table. Everything else is essentially an aggregation of some sort, and we need to basically start to understand what that's doing. Now, this 148 is an interesting number because you would think that this is actually the average of these cells. And so, Averages always catch people out because people sometimes aren't necessarily clear about what they're doing. So in this case, you might see 148. But if I just hold command here and I just go and select each and every one of these, um, you can see that the average is actually 108. And that's the average of these values. Now, it's not good to do averages of averages, but the key thing here is because I'm actually op operating at the order level of ID, whatever I do in this data set, Tableau is always going to be actually calculating the average product value in my entire data set because all it's doing is taking the total value and dividing it by the number of rows in the entire data set in this particular case. And so if you've ever thought that the average sales in any particular context is anything but the average product sales, then that's technically not correct because the level of detail that we're operating here at is actually the product level of detail. I can't drum that home enough. It's really super important, especially when you look at level of detail calculations, because understanding that allows you to create calculations that solve this problem in lots of different ways. OK, now, in order to demonstrate this, I'm going to actually ask a slightly different question. If I was to ask the question, what is the average value of an order in this data set on screen? You'd have to answer that in a slightly different way. Number one, this sales column is actually where we know the value of each and every cell. So the average value of an order in this data set on screen would actually be essentially this row of data divided by the number of orders, which is seven. And so the answer to that is actually here, 317. 317 is the actual value of each and every order. It is not the same as the average sales in this data set because the average sales is actually working at the product level of detail. And so the complex thing here is when we start doing things like level of detail calculations, we have to manipulate what's going on because essentially Tableau is always going to be aggregating at the granularity that we've set in the data set. And so with level of detail calcs, what we can start to do is start to direct it in the specific grouping or specific level of detail that we're trying to work at.
okay? And so I just wanted to create this video to stress that point. Now, just as a brief example, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up this data model connection here, and you'll see that this is actually created for us when we connect to sample Superstore cells, and we've actually got three logical tables in the view. Now, if I go to each one of these, you'll see that this one is the orders table, which is what we can see here. And we've already figured out that this is the product level of granularity. If I go to the people table, you'll see that this operates at a slightly different level. Now, initially you'll look at this and you go, well, <laughs> how is this even working? How is it creating a relationship to orders table? It's because we haven't uh, enabled the ability to show hidden fields. So if I just grab my arrow here, you can just see that this box here isn't ticked. So if we tick that, we can see that the order ID is actually hidden. In fact, the region is hidden because that's what it's actually creating the relationship on. If I click on this line up here, you can see that this is what the relationship ship is based on okay and so what this what's happened here is we've just hidden the column name so we don't have it duplicated tableau has renamed it here to say that it's coming from the people table but that's just basically telling us that it's hidden okay and if we click on the returns table you'll see that the same is true actually with order id i'd actually enable this ahead of time so you can see that here that show hidden fields is already enabled because we just enabled it and so now you see it straight away but if i untick it this too would also be hidden, okay? And so this returns table is operating at the order level, but the people table is actually operating at the regional level, okay? And then when we create this relationship, Tableau is doing the hard work of figuring out how this all comes together. And then it will use that information to decide how things aggregate across the entire data set. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to very, very briefly touch on this concept of granularity because in subsequent videos, I'm gonna be touching on LODs and what I'd like to be able to do is reference this video multiple times in different videos so that you can get a little refresher on what is meant by granularity in a data set. So there are a couple of ways this can be referred to. Sometimes it's called the grain of your data. Sometimes it's called the granularity of the data. Sometimes it's called the lowest level of detail in your data set. Sometimes people will just call it whatever they want. But ultimately, generally speaking, when people are talking about what is the level of detail or what's the detail of your data set, what's the grain, they're talking about what is on each and every individual row. And that's a really important concept to be aware of. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Um, tune in the rest of this week. We're going to be taking on LODs. Tomorrow, I'm going to be touching on the concept of order of operations because that's the next key concept we need to tackle before we take on LODs. So tune in tomorrow for that video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.